Hello? Hello, Martin. Hi, is this Danny? Yeah, this is Danny. How's it going? Hey, how are you? Good, good. How you been? It's been a long time since uh, we talked when you were on the boys cast. Yeah, are we live? Or? We are live. Yeah, we're live on my YouTube channel. It's uh, we're, we're totally live right now, So just so you know. Great. I just, I just turned away from uh, Donald Trump, who uh, seems very, like, much older than he was the last time. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do you do you think he has any chance? Do you think this is gonna? Because uh, I was just saying, it's crazy that the election's not even over from last week. Um. Yeah. I don't know what will happen. Obviously, you know, nobody does. But it, it just strikes me that uh, he looks like a lot older, a lot tired, more tired, quieter, etc. But you know, it, it, we have like two ninety-year-old people, you know, trying to uh, <laughs> <laughs> trying to become president. It's really a weird thing. Yeah, um, you would think that there's been a lesson learned about something along the lines of that, but I guess not. Yeah, I mean, at least Sam Bankman uh, won't be president. So No, no, Sam Bankman will not be president. So I don't remember when we talked about the boys cast. What, is, what was your thoughts on crypto? Just so you know, by the way, so the episode, this is like I do a weekly call-in show, um, but it's on YouTube and like Rumble and stuff. But the topic tonight is the worst you've ever been scammed. So... I had an FTX account. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, I'm also sorry to hear that uh, for myself. But um, yeah, dude. W- w- what was your position on on crypto? I'm a crypto person. I mean, I, I, you know, first first and foremost, you know, I just want to take a step back. Like, cr- crypto is is software at the end of the day, and one of the things about software is that software is for nerds. And software is for people who like to stare at a computer screen all day, like me. Yeah. Uh, if your best friend is Python instead of, uh, you know, a real person, then software is your kind of thing. And the problem is that ninety not for ninety nine percent of people, that shouldn't be kind of the case, right? Like they should have normal lives and just you know worry about that. Um, but for people like me or, or people who love to program. You know, they. This is their life, and crypto is just an extension of software. At the end of the day, like this is not the biggest revolution of all time. Software as a whole is, is a really important revolution. But we, when we made changes in software, when I say we, I have nothing to do with it. Uh, when really sophisticated, great heroes of software made things like the NoSQL database versus the SQL database, that was like a profound change in the way databases worked. You know, and I'm just picking one out of you could pick hundreds of, of examples. Um, and, and they didn't rename arenas. They didn't like, you know, uh, turn, turn things into like daily discussions about stuff like this. These are like fairly esoteric things. Like the idea of a zero knowledge proof is a crypto concept. Yeah. A distributed, you know, distributed ledger technology is a crypto concept and like forcing this stuff to the mainstream and forcing people to consume it. Really a huge mistake. Um, you know, trying to mainstream this stuff and the applications of it. Um, it's sort of like the internet in 2000, we're going to have, uh, this overhype period Then it's going to change everybody's lives in ways that we don't, we won't even notice, right? We don't even think about the internet anymore as like something that's abstract or has changed our lives. It's just embedded within us, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what do you think about all this FTX stuff? Do you believe the real conspiracy that like, have you like seeing what a lot of like the crazy conspiracies being floated around him and that he's like a CIA plant. And, yeah. Like... I mean, so the, the, the funny thing about conspiracy theories is the truth is often stranger than fiction. And the truth here is, uh, is, is already one of the most fascinating stories of all time. So like the idea that we would have to like, try to make it more interesting is really silly. True. Um, yeah. like this, this is already like a Dostoevsky or Homeric, you know, level, you know, uh, tale. So, you know, making it even crazier is so stupid to me. Like the politics side of it, I think everybody's getting wrong. This guy is not a power player in DC. It takes decades to become a power player in DC. You don't just wake up and have influence out there. Yeah, if like you, you can't just buy your way into it overnight. No, definitely not. There's a lot of people that have been giving for decades. They have real relationships, real trust. Um, you, that doesn't happen overnight, especially when you're you're waltzing in on some weird thing. Like if your if your last name is oh I don't know Melon or something like that, right? And your family's had money for 
for 100 years. That's one thing. But this guy is just sort of like a nobody coming in on some really risky industry uh, crypto. So like if I'm a politician, let's say I'm a senator who's been there six terms. I'm looking at this kid and saying, listen, I'll take his money, but I don't know if this guy's going to be here in four years or six right. years. I don't know if this guy's going to, you know, I don't know anything about crypto. Like, I'll wait and see here. So I think that's kind of the the, the thing about that. So I, I really don't think these conspiracies are, are real. I think it's just silly. The the reality is fucking crazy, right? Yeah. This so, is one of the so what do you think he did? Did he just degen trade, leverage traded all of the money away in like Alameda, basically? Yeah, how crazy is that? I think that's that's what happened. I think basically this guy was long, um, you know, all of the and in fact, um, there's some evidence to this. One of the guys that was the CEO of Alameda before uh, Miss America took over, um, uh, my future wife Carolyn. I don't know if you're <laughs> familiar with her. Yeah, you Miss um, America. Yeah. <laughs> yes, she's. Uh, yeah, she's, something she's, else. she's she is something else. Yeah, I wonder how that it's going to all shake out for all of them. Yeah, uh, I think she, she'll be testifying against him in court. But, oh, you think she's gonna? Do you think she's gonna oh, play some sort of like victim card where she's like, I had no choice? I don't know if she's gonna be play a huge victim card, but I think just knowing what I know about the criminal justice system, like it's fairly typical to sort of. Um, and I, I really hate to typecast women here because uh, there are some women that won't do this. Yes. But the women tend to take the stand pretty quickly. Uh, in fact, men do, too. It's not like, you know, one of these things that, um, you know, everybody tends to uh, I hate to use this term because it has connotations, but to rat sure. uh, or to tell on uh, their fr- their former friends when the shit hits the fan, because the government can say, listen, you want to go to jail for 30 years? Do you want to take that stand for 30 minutes? Right. One is a lot easier choice than the other for most people. Yeah, and it's probably pretty easy when you're not in that position to be like, yeah, I would never do that. And then they're like, how about this? And like, exactly. And I, I met hundreds of people in prison that that said that. And, and the, the few people that said that they had the too much pride to do that or whatever, they, they inevitably got 25 or 30 years. And, you know, there are in the criminal world, there are consequences to becoming a rat in the civilian world to, to Carolyn Ellison. There are no consequences. Nobody's going to do a drive by and, you know, have revenge right. on her. If she takes yeah, the yeah. Like it's not like Sam Bankman freed or one of like the other 10 people who are running that thing. Yeah. You didn't swear a, uh, a blood oath to, uh, to FTX or low. Who knows with this creepy cult shit. Like, like I said, why, why conjure a conspiracy theory? This shit is hilarious. They're taking see, drugs. Yeah, they're the, fucking the Adderall <laughs> patches. Do you see those? Those are like super Dude. high potency Adderall patches. You can't eat meat on them. And they have their own thing. So, so this is sort of, I had a bit of a shit eating grin. I don't <laughs> think this is a positive thing for anyone, obviously given the circumstances, but there's this EA effective altruism. Yeah. Thing. That's their whole thing, right? Yeah. And it's kind of like a cult. And, and I have some friends uh, in tech who uh, started this thing, this sort of opposite movement called EAC, which I'm a part of. And we joke that it's a cult and stuff like that, but it's basically every, everything that EA stands for. We kind of stand for the opposite in a lot of ways. And so we were sort of surprised to see all these people, take the EA out of their like Twitter profiles and stuff like that after Sam, you know, sort of has collapsed. I think the craziest thing that he's doing is just like the tweeting and like the weird shit that he's doing now. Like, yeah. dude, you gotta get your shit together. Like, you know, like he's not taking not this time. seriously almost. Yeah. And I think that as soon as the cuffs come on, he's going to realize what a fucking colossal, like, I think he still thinks like he can make this right or like, Dude, it's over. Like, there's nothing you can do. Like, the best thing you can do, given your track record of fucking things up, is actually to take a breather, man. Like, go, you know, do something else. I mean, has there ever been a bigger fuck up in terms of, like, money and speed? No. (laughs) Not not even close. Like, if you look at Lehman Brothers or, like, uh, Bear Stearns or any of these other things, like... Those were were fuck ups, but but not like this. Like those were like very different. He I was, think he like, was like a hundred x leverage trading just their entire customer deposits of FTX. Essentially, it seems like in order for yeah. The, the, the weirdest part is that like the people at Lehman and Bear were like, hey, listen, this is what we did. This is why we did it. We thought we were smart and we were wrong. This guy like doesn't understand what he did was wrong. Like he's yeah. trying to. Like, 
it's and it's so disingenuous. Like it really is somewhere between Madoff, but also like Madoff was like a cunning person. Whereas Sam is like, you can't tell if he was cunning or stupid. Like for all the MIT education, like I wonder if like it's a neuroatypical thing where he's like maybe not that, you know, not all there in some ways. Yeah, but like he's, zero he's like, EQ. Right, right. But he, he comes off as intelligent in lots of places. So it's hard for me to like maybe he's just a sociopath. Like I think a lot of people are saying that now that he's just like clearly somebody that's, you know, you know, just doesn't even understand like what he's doing. Like, cause like he also said in the New York Times article that he doesn't, he's sleeping well and shit like that. Like, what the fuck? Dude? Yeah, like, what do you even, say? yeah, that's just the, uh, just not understanding how bad the optics are. Like, does he not understand that he's such, he's become like a villain? He went from a darling to a villain overnight. Yeah. And again, I, somebody saying that we're gossiping like women, but, um, <laughs> I mean, I think, uh, uh, it, it, to me, like, um, this is past gossip because this is sort of something that's that's affecting everyone in, in this sort of crypto world. And it's unfortunate because it's really putting a black eye on, on what's a pretty promising technology. And a lot of people are losing are going to lose a lot of money. So it's or have lost a lot of money. I, have. So. I mean, my like accounts in FTX, like when it happened, I tried to withdraw money and then. It was just pending, and then just like a couple that on Friday night when they were like all that weird stuff was going on. Then I just went to go look, and then when they were saying there was like all these Trojan Trojan horses that they were putting. Oh in the god, app, yeah, all that stuff, and then all my accounts are just zeroed out. Like they just say zero. Yeah, I have a friend who lost a uh, hundred million in this whole thing. So Whoa, it's it's really a <laughs> hundred million. Yeah, he was one of FTX's biggest customers, and uh, uh, it's, I don't know if he's going to get five or ten of that back in, in that that'll be 10 years from now you yeah know? exactly so it's How, it's nuts that sucks how's he doing uh i almost am avoiding checking in with him because ultimately you know i, I can't help you know so i'd rather you know he's probably going through a lot of things so I, like i don't know how much of a one of my friends is like no you should reach out and tell him you support him and it's like I, I'm always the kind of person that doesn't want you to want to hear that. When, right. Like when it's like that ratchets happen to you, you're just like, whatever, let me just. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're, you're in such a fit, uh, sort of a daze that you don't even remember who, who's, who talked to you and what. So anyway, I mean, I think the, the bigger question here is like, when does he get arrested? Does he cop a plea? How much time does he get? Like, to me, that's, that's the most interesting stuff. And like, can we get, any transparency into what happened because usually these things are like a little private with discovery and the whole like judicial system, like some things leak out into the documents, but a lot of things don't. And it'd be really fun to see some emails or some, you know, some, some of the shit that this guy like tried to pull over the last, you know, decade. Yeah. Um, or even, I mean, Not even a decade. It's three yeah. years. <laughs> well, they're saying happened. that Alameda was created or something, or maybe not. Well, I guess he was doing his like, korean kimchi swap thing like right or whatever that was but but because one of the conspiracies is they're like joe biden announces his this is the consp crazy conspiracy people are like joe biden announces he's running for president and then like a week later uh ftx is founded and everybody's like where did he get all this money from these are all the people who are saying that he's essentially funneling money into because he's the second yeah, biggest donor to the democratic crazy. party behind george soros yeah, to me that's crazy. I, you know, I'm I'm a right leaning kind of dude. So like for me, I'd, I'd have no problem kind of going down that rabbit hole. But it's just nonsense. Like yeah, ultimately, nonsense. yeah. The, so the, the, yeah, yeah. So what do you think is going to happen? What is your your prediction? If you, had I think he gets life. You think he gets I think life? he gets life. You know, I think um, Madoff got life. Um, many other people like that got life. Ultimately, if you, the way the courts look at it, is it depends on how many people you've hurt. If you hurt thousands of people and people who needed that money, you know, you really are, the courts look at that much, much worse than if you hurt five people who are billionaires, right? Like right. that's- As like, they like, should, okay. I guess. Right, it's like, listen, those people are smart enough to figure out, you know, supposed to be smart enough to figure this all out. Whereas the person that has five grand in FTX or 10 grand or 25,000 that they were saving, they thought crypto would be- uh, a good good thing to diversify with or who knows what and and you just rob them i mean that's something that and there's fifty thousand a hundred thousand maybe even a million people like that it's fucked up you yeah. know it's that's that that can really i normally say 
that financial crime should not be as punished as heavily as it is because it's not a crime of violence. It's a paper crime. You know, a lot of this stuff is technicalities like, well, did you use this accounting system or that accounting system? It's not fucking like robbing a bank or like shooting somebody. Uh, but in this case, I, I make the exception where it's like, no, you really do have a, a huge scale of, of pain that's being caused here. Um, that's unprecedented. Really. I mean, you'd have to think there's going to be some suicides from this general oh, yeah. stuff like this. Right. So it's like, it's almost not, uh, you know, a crime. There is an argument to be made that it's a crime of. Absolutely. And you know, when at the end of a trial, when it, time, it comes time for the judge to sentence, typically what happens is the victims read, um, um, the victims get to, uh, sort of, um, have their day in the sun and, and explain uh, what happened and why, how they were affected. And so usually that's a pretty dramatic and, you know, really cathartic experience for the victims. And it's uh, it, it impacts the judge's sentencing. And if you remember Larry Nassar's, yeah, uh, of course, of course. The yeah. Like, so that, that was an example that was so painful and so like visceral that like, you know, when that happened, he got 150 years for, you know, a crime that was really horrible, but like, you know, you, you the victim impact here is going to be, I mean, amongst the most catastrophic victim impacts ever, you know, sort of, you know, done. I'm going to, I'm going to put my name in the lottery to be able to go read a statement. Right. I'm going to really ham it up. Um, okay. I, I'm, I'm not going to keep you because uh, I've been on for a while and I appreciate your time. Do you have, uh, the worst, do you want to provide a story? The worst you've ever been scammed? The worst I've ever been scammed. And oh you can God. count the government as scamming you. I will, I will <laughs> no, count so so I, I've been scammed. Um, I had a startup software company that, you know, was was a really big deal to me. And um, there was a woman named Anna Delvey who uh, <laughs> decided that she uh, wanted to invest in my company. And she told me she was going to invest $300,000. And we waited and waited and waited for this $300,000 and it never came. And basically, um, you know, I, I, she didn't scam me in a, in a bad way. A lot of investors, you know, will invest and then they won't, then they'll decide that they're not investing, you know, sure. that, that, that happens all the time. But, um, you know, that was sort of my, my most recent, uh, scam. If you don't count somebody, um, getting a, uh, a candy bar from me in prison and not paying me. <laughs> uh, thanks, Danny. Great nice. talking to you, bro. Nice. Thanks, Martin. Thanks for calling everybody. Take care.